All right, ladies and gentlemen, now in front of me here, I am going to show you just kind of what's cooking. I've got some arrows, a variety of kinds, and a variety of lengths. Now, before I show you the actual measurements here, consider how long a table that might be. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. So let's just get to it. I, I don't like wasting time, but take a look at this. This is 39 inches, really, to the end of the arrow shaft, pretty much. We, what I've done here is I've gone to the end of the table, and I've just hooked it in tight to the end of the table. I've pushed every one of these right to the edge of the table here. And tried to be precise enough about it to make sure that they're all exactly at the edge of the table. Then come along to here. And what do you see? I wasn't kidding with you. This is pretty much a 40-inch arrow. Now, you may say to me, Keith, you're an idiot. Why would you want that? That's pretty much the length of your bows. And you're not kidding. I mean, if you took some of my bows, that's literally the length of the bow. But there are some bows where you actually need that. And I'm going to show you a prime example of that. Now, I'm going to take my longbow here. Now, the problem is, I actually set this up to show these to you guys in order kind of a thing. So I'm going to have to do that. So let me show you a bunch of bows. And I'm just going to start kind of pulling them down. And you can get a kind of a look at some of these bows. Now, this is my longbow. Uh, and this needs a particular length of arrows, and it might not be what you would think. Now, here is a factory 28-inch arrow in here to show you for length. And what it really needs is something you might not expect. So, I'm going to take this, and we're going to look at each of the lengths of these arrows. For example, I want to show you this guy right here. I want to bring your attention to him at 21 inches. None of these bows get a very strong draw from 7 inches, you might think. What kind of bow could possibly use that? These do. They're war bows. And you don't do a 7-inch draw on this bow, I dare you. You aren't strong enough to do a 7-inch draw on either one of these bows. From their brace height, you draw 7 inches. I will be deeply impressed in you, my friend. So hold on. I'm going to set you up, and you're going to watch me do it. Hold on. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So in this case, the purpose is actually to show you something of the draw length itself and what that, how that impacts things. So what I'm actually going to do is set you up to look at me and hope that you can see. So I'm actually just going to take each one of these in turn and fire it at our target. Now, let me increase the light level. No, that was actually pretty darn good. All right, so... First things first, I'm going to take my longbow and I'm going to attempt to shoot this little tiny short arrow. It is the first one in line. There is a reason for that. Now, I don't have an actual arrow shelf built into this arrow yet, guys. Uh, and what I'm going to show you is that this bow doesn't get much power from here. In fact, the arrow kicks sideways and barely gets a launch. This is a 28 inch arrow. And this is where arrow length comes into it. Now, at 28 inches, this bow is actually able to propel an arrow with decent speed. But 28 inches, it's not. It's Huckleberry. 28 inches is not where it's made to draw to. It's made to draw a much longer arrow, guys. So let's take a look at this on our tape. Measure it up to the end, and you see that this one is a 32 in a little bit inch arrow. It's really a 32 inch arrow. Now 32 inches is what I need for this longbow. When I take this 32 inch arrow, it might look kind of odd. I mean, it's, it's almost the size of the bow and it's literally the size of some of my other bows pretty much, technically not quite. And it might not look right to you, but when you draw this out to full, you can immediately see that this is correct, okay? I can draw this to full quite comfortably with a two finger draw, this is standard. Even with my draw, I can come over and grab the string and, and draw it out, okay? Um, now, this is the trick about that. When you use a 32 inch arrow, you are pretty much getting to the back of it, but not quite, because this bow is actually able to handle a much longer arrow. This is that near 40 inch arrow, guys. 
And you can see, I'm actually able to draw about 36 inches with this bow, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to have a long arrow. Because ah, if I really lean into it, this is a 36 inch arrow. No, this is longer. Take a look at that on the tape, like we just did. And you will see, I'll just give you a little reminder here. It's 39 inches. Well, I'm drawing that to like 37. Now the problem with that is this bow is not very good at firing short arrows. Its draw is such that it comes on very gently, which is why it flinged the really light arrow like crap. But if I took that same arrow, and we're gonna put this bow aside now, and I'm gonna draw another one that looks kinda just like it. This is a long bow. This is actually made out of the exact same rods as that long bow I just showed you, only it's got two of them. And this, this thing is not a joke, my friend. This is a, vi a viable, certifiable beast of a bow. Um, but it does not take long arrows. You couldn't draw this 200 pound draw weight bow to full. It's actually right around 160 more than likely, 150, 160. Well, it was about 160 before I softened it. And I, I now have it sitting at less than that. But the idea here is you don't really use a two-finger draw, you can, but it's one of the few that will actually fire this on a decent draw. I'm going to show you one of the other ones that will, and then we're going to get to why you would have different arrow lengths. So that bow, there's no point having a long arrow. You don't want a long arrow. It's just something sticking out over the other end of it. This one looks like it'd be perfect. Only this is another war bow, and this is a brutal one. You do not pull this all the way, but with this you can, and it's hard. I mean, you're finding this is a 48 gram object without the screw in it. So this is pushing 50 grams, guys. This is serious weight. This is right around 750 grain, but <coughs> unlike these others that are pushing right around 40 grain, or sorry, a 40 gram, at, you know, a minimum of 28 inch, inches in length. This one's literally just under 21 inches. And the brace height on this is right around six and three quarter inches, guys. And as you can see, it's pretty brutal. And it's really not designed to be shot the way you might think. It's not designed for you to take two fingers and draw it to full like a longbow. It's actually designed for this. And for me to just zip past a camera like that, I'm pretty comfortable in its accuracy. But I pulled really gentle, uh, and I don't have to. You could actually pull this pretty hard. And as you saw, I can draw this out to full. But this is pretty much, like that was like three inches of draw, guys. Literally, I, I'm, all I'm doing is grabbing it and pulling it and giving it about that much. That's it. And that's enough to fire the arrow across the room. That's the purpose of a real war bow. It's actually a short draw. I'd be better off having a 550 or 700 grain um, crossbow arrow, a bolt, that's right around 22 inches or 22, 3, 24 inches. That'd be great. For this, you might think, you can actually go away with even going shorter than this. I could go 18 inches because you're not drawing this to its maximum length. And when you're not, you end up with this thing. Look at the length at that draw that's sticking over. It's a lot, guys. And so I can draw that three or four inches that this is designed to draw to, to fire this arrow, but I still have a lot sticking out. If I were to cut four inches off this arrow and fire an 18 inch arrow, for example, this would actually be a much better arrow because it would cut off a lot of weight. The weight of the arrow versus the poundage. Now this can handle the weight because it's got serious poundage, but you need an arrow that you can draw to full on it and have it just be, just barely stick out the tip of this. That's all you want. You don't want four inches of arrow sticking out because that is inaccuracy waiting to happen. That tip is gonna be weighted and it's moving up and down while you're trying to pull a really heavy bow. It makes you less and less accurate the harder you pull to try and get that full length. And in the end, you always end up with a big chunk hanging out over the end. So it's kind of like the right tool for the right job. If I'm going to be firing this bow, I actually don't want this arrow 
even though the other warbow that looks very similar also fires it. They look similar, but they're not. One is much longer and has a much longer draw. So while that one, you're only really drawing it three or four inches on its 150 pound pole, which is brutal. On this one, uh, you can draw a lot differently and I can actually draw this arrow out much more readily, just like a regular bow. Um, but at the same time, you will get to a point very quickly because it stacks really fast and hard with its 160 pound draw weight. Uh, you will not draw this aerial back farther than that, which is about perfect. It, it is the perfect length for this bow. It's actually why I made them was for this bow. Now I do have shorter ones as well, but this one is actually out of the quiver I keep here for when I want to fire the big bad boy and a couple of the others. So I'm just going to pop this off a tension here. And what I will tell you is that I have a lot of arrows here that you'll see in different sizes that I've made. And the reason I'm constantly trying to make different size and lengths and weights of arrows is because I've made six bows and every one of those is significantly different. Very rare are the bow that I could take that would fire any of these arrows comfortably. In fact, this might be one of them. Now this one is kind of like the longbow where I can draw it pretty far back. It won't quite get all the uh, distance out of this, but this is almost 40 inches. However, if I kick that aside, because it really is too long, I'm actually planning on knocking four inches off of those. And you put this one aside and into it, which is 32, just over 32 inch. You can see this is a really nice draw. And it'll fire it with good speed. In fact, I put a hard shot through my longbow with this and it ripped it through a target through and through that I normally just bounce off of. But it's because it's got a pretty hardcore tip and I launched it pretty hard. This time I launched it really gentle just to show you guys. I don't want a, a wicked ricochet that's going to take out the camera. But uh, this is just to show you guys what the difference is. Now, it might not seem like there'd be a lot of difference between these two bows and the length of arrow you might need. I mean, they both have the identical brace height, okay? They really do have a, the same brace height, but they're different lengths and they're different stiffnesses. These two members are very different thicknesses and that, the two of those things, this is shorter, which already made it stiffer and it's a much heavier material. This isn't just a light war bow. This is a heavy, this is a, a serious war bow right here. It doesn't look it, but it's brutal. It's the reason I made it. And it's also the reason why I'm actually going to leave this one under tension. The other one, the double bow, I don't like to do it. I actually heated it to soften it and I still have to retreat it again and keep working with it. But this one, I just bowed and have used. I've never tried to weaken it, but it's brutal. Uh, the other one was just too strong. It's even stronger poundage than this one. And this one is brutal. Um, but now I have the other one, so it's drawable and I have reasonable arrows that I can use in it. Uh, they work very well considering they're just bare shafts, but I don't have an arrow shelf built onto it yet. Um, same with this one, partly because they're not the priority. I don't generally use them because they're not strong. No, they're plenty strong. They're badass, but that's exactly why I don't use them. I'd be wrecking my shoulder. <coughs> what I like to do is use this one where it's not too strong. It's not too weak. It's just kind of, it's a real nice in the middle kind of poundage. Um, I've made this so tight that I can just kind of move my knock and adjust it for exactly where my elevation is and everything came out real nice. I've also adjusted my elevation by putting CA glue in and working it back and forth until it dried thoroughly so that I can lock in my elevation very precisely without uh, having it move on me. I've also put a, a padding, a band-aid actually works great, uh, just to give this a little bit of padding so that I'm not wearing away the actual fiberglass or material or what a composite, whatever it is. This was, uh, it is gonna be a problem with anything you're gonna have like this, you're gonna wear away the side. So this one is nice because it's done. It has its arrow shelf. It has its padding. It has all that stuff. And it's a sweet little bow. It's not too crazy. Um, but it, it's one of the things that I like about it was that it'll fire any of the arrows here. It'll fire those little short arrows and do so pretty darn accurately, actually, because, well, it's that kind of bow. You can quite accurately do it. It'll quite handily fire these. Being that it's 48 pounds at 28 inches, it's more than happy to fire arrows. It'll fire longer arrows too. 
like these 32 inches. But more importantly, it'll also fire these shorties. And I, I basically kept making different goes because I wanted different things out of it. And as you can tell, it didn't get incredible speed, but it made the minimum speed that is really required for half these inaccuracy for short range target shooting, which is what I wanted it for. So when you make a bow, it's not just about the bow, it's about the total package. The arrows matter, the bow matters, everything involved matters, the length of the arrows matters. And when you hear me talking or other uh, boyers talking about having the length of your arrow match the draw length of your bow, this is what we're talking about. My arrow has to match the draw length. So if I draw my bow, I don't want my arrow sticking eight inches out the other end or six inches it's a weighted tip and it's going to be bouncing around on you. You're going to be doing this and the harder you're pulling, the more you start to do this. And well, that just makes it worse. What you want is to have a nice arrow so that when you're at the point where you're starting to pull hard and you might shake a little, the arrow is right up against the rest pretty much so that it's not hanging out over the end. When it is, you get a much bigger uh, variation and it'll be wiggling around a lot more and it's way harder to make an accurate shot. Part of perfect accuracy is knowing your business, dialing things in perfectly. I don't really claim that I can make you have perfect accuracy. What I claim is that I can teach you how to do it. That's it for this one, guys. I just wanted to show you what's up with the arrow lengths and why that matters so much and why the poundage matters so much. And I mean, if I fire this really heavy bow and fire this arrow that's light, flexible, inexpensive. I might actually shatter the shaft. It's why I don't do that. Whereas these ones are so heavy and brutal that I don't fire them with anything but my most heavy war bows because they don't won't, they won't shatter the rear end. The knocks are pretty deep as you can see. So in the end, uh, I want to get something strong enough. When I make a war bow, the arrow has to be stronger to handle the higher impact force. It has to be able to be short enough to not have a crazy overhang. Uh, a typical crossbow has a very short arrow. We call it a bolt. We don't even call them arrows anymore because they're so darn short. Keith out.